From 1994 to 1997, Jeff Saturday played center on some of the best Tar Heel football teams to ever take the field. After 14 years in the NFL, Saturday decided to retire and take a job with ESPN as an NFL analyst. On November 15th, Saturday returned to Chapel Hill to enjoy Carolina's homecoming game against Pittsburgh. Prior to a speaking engagement on campus, the six-time Pro Bowl center sat down for an interview with Jones Angel. First of all, just how you doing? How's life treating you? And how are you enjoying things post-playing career? It's going great. Uh, you know, I transitioned from the NFL to ESPN. That transition's been really good. I enjoyed it and um, the, the schedule that it offers. I can still be involved in the game mm -hmm. and still be involved with players, coaches, GMs. You, you know, you kind of name it. You can still keep your finger on the pulse of the game, but I don't have to give my life to it. I got three young kids, and my wife and I enjoy spending time together. So it's been a really good balance, you know, of, of, of life and work. Have you liked the TV aspect of it? I know you just said you enjoy being close to the game, but do you like being on TV and doing that part? I have enjoyed it. The guys I work with are really cool. So that, that part has been a lot of fun. And I've learned a lot more than I thought I would. You know, when you have to study the game kind of outside, I've learned a lot more about defensive back play and why coverages are the way they are and where routes go right and where they go wrong and things that as you're playing, you may know they run certain coverages or this is what their tendencies are, but you don't really know why. And so that part has really been interesting to be able to learn why do certain teams do it a certain way and, and to be able to sit down and talk to guys like Teddy Bruschi or, or uh, you know, Woodson and th these guys who have played at an all pro level for many years and, and they explain to you, hey, this is why we do it. And um, that part has been a lot of fun. And, and the guys, like I said, you have a great time. It's like, yeah, it kind of takes you back to a locker room uh, mentality where you can talk real, real games and real stuff that's happening. And so that part's been a lot of fun. Everybody's experience in college is different. What was your academic experience like here at Carolina? Education was a major reason why I signed here. You know, this wasn't a football factory. I knew coming here, basketball was the number one sport. And I remember having that conversation with my parents of, you know, this, I could have went to Clemson. I could have, you know, the different schools that football was more of a priority. And I remember sitting down and my parents saying, you know, this thing can end any time. But the education you're going to take from Carolina is going to be one that prepares you for your life. So understand that in this balancing of this decision, and you're a 17-year-old man making this, it's a hard, it's a tough decision. Yeah. And so understanding the balance between a great education and, and potentially a great football career, but maybe just a good one, and, and which one uh, took priority. And so I chose the education portion of it. And it challenged me. What, with the school I came out of, we were, we were in you know, Decatur, Georgia, so really close to the city of Atlanta. So education was important, but I didn't get, I wasn't as sharp as I should have been when I first got here. You were part of some really good teams here. What do you remember on the field of, of some of those great squads, particularly late in your career? Well, I wasn't a really super highly recruited player, and there were a lot of us in 93, Brian Simmons and Greg Ellis, and we weren't the biggest names. But um, there was a level of accountability amongst each other that really, really brought our program up. We were going to win, and we, this is how we're going to win. We're going to do it the right way, and here's how we're going to go. But we weren't afraid to challenge each other. And I, and I, I used an example um, the other day. We were, we were uh, undefeated at the time, and we were playing Florida State, and we had a bad game against Florida State. And I remember going in and just apologizing to B. Sims, man, I'm, you know, I'm sorry. You know, we, we, didn't, we didn't do our part. And I remember him saying, you should be, you know? You guys didn't get it done. But that, but that kind of stuff challenged each and every one of us. And, and all of us took responsibility for what we did on the field. And I appreciated that. And I, I took that to the next level to the NFL, is that every guy on this team has to have a vested interest in the success of this football team. And whether it was in college or whether it was in the pros, there was no difference. I want to see you doing the same thing I'm doing because ultimately your game, you know, directly impacts my success. And I think that leadership that we had on those teams is really what made us what we were, is that every guy had a vested interest in us being the very best we could be. And we were going to call everybody to a level of, you're going to play this way. And when I saw Ryan Carfley, who was my backup, walk out on that field, I expected him to play like I played. And if he didn't, <clears throat> I was going to tell him why. This is what you got to do. Here's where you got to be. And every player took that same responsibility. And we, we called each other to a level of greatness that, that um, I'm very proud to be a part of.